Alfred wants to be a supermodel, so he visits a fancy audition in New York, hoping for the best. There's a line of his rivals standing in the lobby. One of them is not from this planet. Can you guess who? This guy with the snake eyes. Daisy, the photographer, invites Alfred to her studio to take some shots. After a couple of days, she receives printed pictures and freaks out. Why? Take a look at Alfred's body in this picture. Both of his feet are right. Amazingly, Alfred gets his dream job. A famous magazine invited him to shoot their cover. He arrives at the studio early to get ready. Before the start of the photo shoot, Alfred looks in the mirror. Gross! There's an allergic rash all over his face. Alfred interrogates three suspects. The assistant says, I was told you're allergic to peanuts and berries, so we've prepared only safe snacks. The makeup artist says, I didn't touch your food. I put on your makeup and left for a coffee break. And the cleaning lady says, I know how sensitive models are. That's why I only use organic, hypoallergenic cleaning products. Can you guess who's guilty of Alfred's allergy? The makeup artist. Even though she didn't have access to his food, she was the only one who had access to his face, and she could put toxins in his makeup. Alfred gets hired as a model for a clothing catalog. He's asked to put on these trendy jeans. Can you count the exact number of holes in this piece of clothing? These two holes go through the pant legs, so in fact, these are four holes, not two. As for this hole, it's only on the front of the leg, plus one hole. But that's not all. These jeans also have three more holes, two on the bottom of the pant legs and one on the belt. So the correct answer is eight. Alfred stayed late in the studio to write a post, and now he's finally going home. He walks along the dark hall of the office building. Suddenly, Alfred hears someone screaming for help. The voice comes from the broom locker. He opens the door. Daisy, who closed you here? Daisy replies, I have no idea. I went to the eighth floor to eat in a Chinese restaurant, but it was closed for maintenance all day. So I decided to go home. Then someone put a garbage bag on my head and locked me in here. In the morning, Alfred interrogates five suspects. The cleaner says, I was washing the windows on the eighth floor. The makeup artist says, I was cleaning my brushes in the bathroom. The assistant says, I was helping the makeup artist, but I went home earlier. The stylist says, I had dinner in the local Chinese restaurant and then went to a concert. And the cameraman says, I was sick yesterday, so I went home early. Who locked up Daisy? the stylist. The Chinese restaurant was closed yesterday. The six friends get trapped inside the cave. Unfortunately, they had left all the food in the camp. That's why they're starving while waiting for the rescue group to arrive. Suddenly, Alfred finds five cookies in his pocket. Can you find the easiest way to divide these five cookies among six people equally? They should split the first three cookies in half and divide the remaining two cookies into three parts. This way, each person will get one half and one third of a cookie. Alfred returns from his vacation and checks his email. He sees three new job offers. Francis invites Alfred to participate in New York Fashion Week. Julia offers good money for a shampoo commercial. And Crystal offers him to be the face of a famous clothing brand. One of these employers is a scammer. Can you guess who?
Crystal, the spelling of the brand Gucci, is wrong. Alfred arrives at the shampoo commercial filming spot. He enters the dressing room and sees his actress partner, Amber. She has a short, messy haircut. Amber yells, I took a 30-minute nap and someone has cut my beautiful long hair. Alfred asks three suspects one question. What were you doing the last 30 minutes? The makeup artist says, I was streaming a backstage video for my followers. The guard replies, My coffee break started 30 minutes ago, so I went to the vending machine and bought hot chocolate. But then I received an assignment to catch a stranger with scissors. I kicked him out and returned to my workplace. And the stylist says, Oh, I spent the last 20 minutes in the toilet. I shouldn't have eaten seafood for breakfast. Can you help Alfred spot the liar? It's the guard. He bought the hot chocolate 30 minutes ago. But why is it still hot? Alfred arrives at the fashion week. He's staying in a hotel with a roommate, Billy. Alfred takes a brief look at Billy's suitcase and spots three weird details right away. Can you see them too? Why does he need the shaving cream if he uses an electric razor? The book title is printed upside down, and there's no pair to this sock. Edward and Stan are best friends. Edward lives with his wife, Leah, and Stan lives alone. Can you spot Stan's house? There's a love note on the fridge in the right kitchen. Therefore, Stan lives in the left one. Edward is furious because Leah cleaned his home office without permission. Can you spot five changes? Here they are. A lot of neighbors gather for Edward's garage sale. One of them is a robot. Can you guess who? This gentleman. Stan is visiting a food court and finds two similar bakeries. Can you spot five differences between them? Over here. What about these burger places? Can you find 10 differences? Here they are. Can you spot a mistake in this menu? Tuna isn't an ice cream. What about this coffee menu? Any mistakes? Free toppings have a price. Stan works in an agency that holds super secret investigations. They're looking for people with superpowers all over the planet. One day, an anonymous user broke into their corporate system where all the data was stored. Stan finds three suspects who are capable of such crimes and interrogates them. He asks only one question. What did you manage to find out when you stole the data? Billy says, I haven't done this kind of crime for 15 years. I don't want to go back to prison. Anna says, I was going to steal your data, but I changed my mind. You didn't have any valuable information. Nobody will believe in superheroes. And Liam replies, Bruh, if I committed such a crime, I would have covered all traces. Who's lying? Anna, 
she couldn't have learned the secret information without breaking into their system. Stan is visiting a fashion show. He received a clue that one of these models can be a robot. Can you guess who? The second lady. She has a USB outlet on her neck. The robot model, Nina, is very famous, and nobody knows that she's not human. Stan invites her to his office. Nina confesses, I arrived from another planet to study human behavior. Unfortunately, someone recorded their secret interrogation and posted it online. Only four people were in the office at that moment. Stan questions them. Ryan, the cleaner, says, I was vacuuming the fifth floor and couldn't hear anything. Mia, the manager, says, I'm a huge fan of Nina, even though she's not a human. I would never set her up like that. And the guard, Billy, says, I didn't hear your conversation. I was watching a football match in my headphones. Who's lying? Ryan, their office is a four-story building. Nina invites Stan over for dinner. She lives in a big, circular house with a maid, a butler, and a gardener. Nina goes to her room to change. Suddenly, Stan hears her scream and runs to her. Oh no, someone broke into my safe and stole my diamond necklace. Stan interrogates the staff. The butler says he was organizing the library. The maid says that she was dusting the corners. And the gardener says she was watering the roses. Who is lying? The maid. She was dusting the corners, but Nina lives in a circular house. So there are no corners. Stan invites Nina to a fancy restaurant to refute rumors that she's a robot. Can you spot any mistakes in this menu? They confused pomegranate with meat. Stan leaves the table to wash his hands and returns in two minutes. Can you spot five changes? Here they are. Nina slips and falls on the floor. Now she needs to replace a broken fragment in her body as soon as possible. Stan takes her to a secret lab. They need to enter a three-digit code to open the door. He starts looking for clues and notices some tips written on the wall. But the last digit is erased. Can you help them crack the password? The digits indicate the points of intersections of the lines. So the last digit is four. They open the door and enter a spacious hallway. A note on the wall says, Lab is behind the purple door. Can you help the guys find the purple door? The first door is wooden but it has an inscription and an arrow indicating that the purple door is on the right. The second door is painted blue and red, so it doesn't fit. Let's take a closer look at the third door. There is purple color under the layer of yellow paint, so the guys choose this door. Nina throws a party at her house and invites Stan. He receives an anonymous message. There's a werewolf among the guests. Can you find this person? The first lady is wearing very long nails, and the second guy has a heavy beard. But it doesn't prove anything. But let's take a look at the third lady. She's trying to hide her shiny yellow wolf eyes under her fancy sunglasses. In the kitchen, Stan meets three chefs preparing delicious meals. One of them is a criminal. Can you guess who?
the third lady. She's adding glass fragments to the food. Stan calls the police and they arrest the third chef. She confesses that one of the guests, John, bribed her. He asked her to put glass in Stan's plate, but there are three Johns at the party. The officer asks one of them just one question. How do you know Stan? John 1 says, I'm a billionaire and I don't do interrogations without my lawyer. John 2 says, I came here to see Nina because she's my crush. I've never seen Stan before. And John 3 says, Stan and I went to the same college. I haven't seen him for many years, but today we met by chance. Who's lying? John 1. He's wearing a fake Gucci sweater. It's unlikely that he's a billionaire. The next day, Stan wakes up in a dusty basement. A creepy voice says that Stan can pass through one of these three doors. Behind the first door, there's a tank with crocodiles. Jungles full of wild animals are hiding behind the second door. And there's a giant blue whale behind the third door. It can easily swallow an adult human. Which door is more or less safe? Stan should pick the third door. Whales can't survive without water. Therefore, it's not a threat. Hi, my favorite detective. I've got a new portion of tricky riddles for you to train your sharp mind. Let's start. Yeah. One summer night, Emily threw a big party. But in the morning, she discovered that someone had stolen all her jewelry and money. Oh, no. The police have three suspects. Daniel, Emily's boyfriend, Lily, her best friend, and Hannah the girl's sister. Daniel told the police that he'd been playing computer games with his friend all night long. Lily felt sick and went home in the middle of the night. She said she knew nothing about the theft when the police called her. And Hannah said that she had stayed at the party till 7 a.m. and then had taken a taxi home because nobody could give her a lift. It was dark and she couldn't see anything. Who was lying? Hannah, at 7 a.m. in the summer, it's already light outside. One day, a famous soccer coach went missing right from the changing rooms. The police had three suspects, and all of them were from his team. Brandon said that after the training, he'd stayed on the pitch to practice a bit more. He hadn't been to the changing room yet. Andrew swore that after the training, he had gone outside to meet with his girlfriend. And James said, when I was leaving the changing room, the coach was still there. Who's behind the disappearance of the coach? It's Brandon. He said he hadn't been to the changing room yet. But look, he's wearing not his uniform, but his street clothes. Once, a mad professor kidnapped Zoe and held her in his house. Was he planning to experiment on her? There was no way the young woman could escape. But one day, the scientist got bored. You'll have to make breakfast for me tomorrow. If I like it, I'll let you go. If not, no one will hear about you again. <laughs> In the morning, Zoe went to the kitchen and started cooking. But when she turned away from the stove, the scientist threw a whole box of salt into the pot. However, when Zoe served him breakfast, he realized he had to set the girl free. Can you figure out what Zoe cooked? The girl boiled eggs. A man on a motorbike crashed into the window of Mr. Ruby's store, grabbed several expensive watches and drove away. When the police arrived, Mr. Ruby told them that he was almost sure it had been his nephew, Patrick. The officers went to visit the guy. Because of a heavy downpour, it took them one hour to get there. Patrick was at home, together with his friend. Look at the weather. I haven't been outside since yesterday. Patrick's friend confirmed his words, but the police didn't believe their story and arrested Patrick. Why?
The guy's helmet is hanging on his motorbike. If it had been there since the previous day, it would have been filled with rainwater by now. Four friends went to a cafe together. Two of them, Linda and Mike, ordered a large pot of blueberry tea. Kirsten took some lemonade and Oscar opted for orange juice. Half an hour later, Linda and Mike lost consciousness and were rushed to a hospital. When the police analyzed the tea they had drunk, they found poison in it. The main suspects were, of course, Kirsten and Oscar. Why didn't they drink the tea? Kirsten said that she didn't like tea with berries. And Oscar explained that he was allergic to blackberries. Who is the culprit? It's Oscar. He said he was allergic to blackberries, but the tea his friends drank was with blueberries. David worked at a construction site. Once, someone attacked him and the unconscious man was taken to a hospital. Police officers who arrived to investigate the case had three suspects who also worked at the construction site. Alex, Ryan, and John. Alex said, I was putting all tiles on the roof when the accident happened. Ryan confessed that he'd been sleeping under the tree, and John claimed that he'd been laying bricks at that time. Can you figure out who's lying? Alex was the one to hurt David. The building has no roof yet, so he couldn't be putting tiles up there. You've bought a cute little rabbit at a pet store. The animal can breed every two months, and every time it will deliver five babies. How many rabbits will you have in a year? You'll have just one rabbit. If you want to have little bunnies, you have to buy two rabbits. Look at these people attentively. Who is a mer person? Pay attention to every little detail. It's the guy on the right. Look, his hands are webbed. Allison won the main prize of $1 million on a game show. But when the shooting was over, it turned out that the host of the show oh, no. had disappeared, together with the prize. The police managed to log into the computer in his office. They saw that the host had sent this message to his girlfriend. It looked like the host had told his girlfriend where he was going. The police went to the airport, but which flight was the host going to catch? Can you figure it out? Now let's see, the first two letters of Atlas are A-T. If we take three letters from the word land, it'll leave us with L-A-N. And the two first letters of tattoo are T-A. Together, these letters make up the word Atlanta. Hurry to the gate, officers! Jack got lost in the woods. Suddenly, he saw a castle. The man rushed there and was greeted by the owner of the castle. You have to answer just one question. If you win, I'll show you the way out of the forest. But if you lose, you'll never leave my castle. Jack agreed. The owner asked, There are four mirrors on the wall. One of them reflects fire-spitting dragon Niren. The second, beautiful mermaid Laura. In the third mirror, you can see a terrifying vampire Sam. And in the fourth, unicorn David. You have to figure out which reflection isn't real and fast. The reflection of Vampire Sam isn't real. Vampires can't be reflected in mirrors. Today, I'm going to put your attentiveness to the test. Pay attention to every little detail and you'll solve all the riddles yeah. in no time. Mark was walking along the river when he heard someone screaming. It was a young woman who was drowning. The guy immediately left his jacket and backpack on the ground and jumped into the water. Luckily, he was on time. When Mark pulled the woman out of the river, he saw a passerby standing next to his stuff. Unfortunately, I can't swim, but I looked after your things, the man said. 
Then why did you rummage in my backpack? Mark asked. How did he understand someone had opened his backpack? When he dropped the bag on the ground, the zipper was on the left side, but now it's on the right side. It was a scorching hot day when Thomas made a bet with his friends. At that time, they were chilling in the garden, drinking water and lemonade. Thomas told his friends that water produced by different companies tasted different too. You can blindfold me. I'll take a sip from two bottles of water. The one we have on the table and the one from a different producer. I saw it in the kitchen. I bet I'll be able to tell the difference. Then he did exactly that. His friends were ready to give Thomas the money he had won. But one of them cut in. You were cheating, he said. Why did he think so? It was an extremely hot day. No wonder the water had been outside for several hours, which was much warmer than the water brought from the kitchen. Someone robbed a bank in a large city. A police detective went to visit the main suspect, who had been detained several times before. I've been feeling unwell this week, and I haven't left my apartment for three days. Luckily, I didn't need food. My fridge is full. You can make sure of it yourself. The man said and opened his fridge, but the detective realized the man was lying and arrested him. How did he figure it out? First of all, that loaf of bread on the table looks fresh. Plus, if the man had been staying inside for three days already, his fridge wouldn't be so full. Mr. Black sold beautiful, rare vases. There were dozens of them on the shelves of his store. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, the owner had his head bandaged and his store was a mess. Some guys in masks ran into my store and grabbed the money and the most expensive vases. Then they hit me on the head and I blacked out. Police officers immediately understood that Mr. Black was lying to get the insurance money. How did they figure it out? Even though most of the vases are on the floor, they aren't even cracked. But if the vases had fallen down from the shelves during the robbery, they would have been shattered. Look at these two bloggers. As you see, they both seem to be very popular. They also have the same amount of likes, but there's something wrong with one of them. She must be hiding something. What is it? The girl on the right has a fake bag. The logo on it looks like that of Chanel, but it's written Gucci underneath. Marcel was driving along a dangerous mountain road. Suddenly, he saw a man sitting on the side of the road and stopped. It turned out the man hadn't managed to control his car. It fell off the road and the man got thrown out of the window. And now, his very expensive car was beyond repair. Could you be my witness when I prepare the documents for my insurance company? The man asked Marcel. The guy agreed, but asked the man to show him what was inside the car. The man took the key out of his pocket and unlocked the damaged vehicle. I won't take part in this fraud, Marcel said. Why did he think the man was lying? If the man had been thrown out of the car, the key would still be in the ignition. Dylan and Susan had been happily married for 10 years. One day, Dylan went on a business trip. When he returned, Susan immediately understood that the man uh -oh. wasn't her husband. How did she figure it out? Dylan always wore his wedding ring. If you were attentive, you must have noticed it on his finger. 
But the man who returned to Susan didn't have the wedding ring. The police found out that a smuggler was going to leave the country through the largest airport in the city. A detective arrived there and detained three people who looked suspicious. Look at them and try to figure out who the smuggler is. It's the third passenger. His suitcase is full of totally random stuff. Women's shoes, some random socks, a pair of old dirty jeans, and even a wig. Plus, when closed, the suitcase looks much larger than when it's open. Sarah's husband, Michel, was a professional cyclist. He was about to have a challenging cycling tournament. I promise I'll bring you the bouquet they give to the winner, Michel told Sarah. Four hours later, he came back with beautiful flowers. But Sarah realized right away that Michelle hadn't won the tournament. How did she figure it out? Those flowers are actually from Sarah's garden. The same flowers are growing next to their house. Look at these people. The man is in the hospital. He's lost his memory. And these two women both claim to be his partner. One of them is obviously lying, but which one? The woman on the left is lying. If they were married, they would have wedding rings on their fingers. Now, there are these three people. One of them is lying. Who is it? Look at this woman claiming that she's pregnant. See that Adam's apple? It's a man. He can't be pregnant. Are you ready to challenge your intelligence? You can crack these cool puzzles on your own and then surprise your friends at the table. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time to think. All right, we've arranged these six coins specially for you. Can you turn this shape into a hexagon in just three moves? Wait a minute. There's a catch. You can only slide a coin and put it in a place where it touches two others. And it shouldn't disturb other coins while moving. Good luck. Well, have you cracked it? Here's the right answer. Move one, two, and three. Voila! Our perfect hexagon is ready. You can also use this riddle in reverse to challenge your friends. Here's another riddle with a hexagon shape. The task is to arrange these coins into a triangle with only four moves. The rules are the same. Every move should consist of sliding just one coin to a new location, where it touches at least two other coins. Are you ready? Let's get started. Here's the correct solution. And now the challenge is to make a cross with five coins going vertically and five horizontally. But you can only move two coins. Sounds impossible, but there's actually a way out. Good luck. You probably think that the number of coins is not enough to complete this task. But if we put a stack of three coins in the center, it becomes quite possible. Magic! The next puzzle will also check your ability to think outside the box. Eight coins are arranged in an H shape. The challenge is to move just four coins to create an O shape. Each of the four coins must always be touching two others in the shape, and no gaps are allowed. All right, let's see the answer. One, two, three, and four. It's a lot easier than it seems. It took 10 coins to build this triangle. Can you flip it upside down by moving only three coins? Yeah. 
first of all. Grab this top coin and move it all the way down here. And now just level up these two coins. And voila, the triangle is flipped. Here comes the next puzzle. This square shape consists of nine coins. The challenge is to turn the square into a triangle shape by moving only two coins. You can move them anywhere, but you have to use all nine coins in the final shape. Can you solve it? Ready to see the answer? Just move these two coins, and there you have it. Feeling dizzy already, but there's actually an alternative answer to this puzzle. Want to try? Let's put the coins back in the initial position and think again. Here's the second solution. The next task is to move just one coin and make two lines. Each line should consist of four coins. Can you do it? This puzzle requires unconventional thinking, but the answer is simple. You should only put this coin over here and there you have it. Let's go ahead and try to crack the next puzzle. The task is to move just three coins to reverse the entire shape. Can you do it? Ready to see the solution? Step one, move this coin over here. Step two, this one goes here. And finally, step three. Our next puzzle will require some additional props for matchsticks. And now let's go ahead and place the coin outside by moving no more than two matchsticks. But be careful, you must create the same shape that you started with. Only this time, the coin should be outside of the parallel matchsticks. Try to explore beyond your expectations if you want to solve this mystery. And good luck! Well, how's it going? Here's the solution. Slide this matchstick like this and put this one over here. A billionaire wants to expand a swimming pool in his garden and asks for your help. But there are four old oaks nearby, and you cannot remove them. Can you add four matchsticks and rearrange the entire shape to create a new square swimming pool? Here's the solution. Easier than it sounds, huh? Let's go ahead and take a look at the next riddle. Here's a square. Each side is built of four matchsticks. The challenge is to add 10 matchsticks and split the initial square into four areas with the same size and shape. How's it going? Have you cracked it? Here's the correct answer. These matches are arranged into the shape of a David star. The task is to add 12 matchsticks and create 9 rhombuses. Can you do that? Here's the complete solution. Let's take a look at the next puzzle. Here's a square. Can you move just one matchstick to create 6 squares? Voila, one, two, three, four, five, and six. There are 10 matchsticks placed in two directions, six placed vertically and five horizontally. The challenge is to move one matchstick so that there are six matchsticks in both directions. Ready to see the answer? Just put this matchstick over here. You don't have to be a great mathematician to solve the next riddle, but it can make your brain sweat. 2 plus 7 minus 2 plus 7 equals 14. 
Can you move just one matchstick and change the final result to 30? Voila! There are seven matchsticks on the table. The task is to arrange them so that each touches the others. Can you do that? Nobody said that all matchsticks have to be flat on the surface. So this is what the correct solution looks like from the top. You should put the seventh matchstick vertically at the center. The next puzzle is harder than it looks. There are three silver coins and two gold coins on the table. They're set up one by one. And the challenge is to rearrange them into the following position to separate gold from silver in just five moves. But there's a catch. You can only move a pair of gold and silver coins together. They have to touch each other. For example, this move is okay, but you cannot make it this way. Ready to try? Remember, five moves only. You can pause the video if you need additional time to think. Let's begin. Ready to see the solution? Step one, move this pair over here. And now steps two, three, four, and five. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.